So before we get going on the unboxing portion of this, I wanted to make one point, and that is where to buy it. So it's available at Lowe's, right? But you don't want to go in the store and buy it. What you want to do is go online and either do a store pickup or have them send it to you. And the reason's price. Lowe's.com generally has cheaper prices than in-store. In the case of this, I paid $159. However, when I went into the store to pick it up, it was on the shelf for $239. So it's just something to kind of keep in mind. Even if you're in the store, go ahead and look it up online real quick on like Lowe's.com and they'll price match themselves. So with that, let's get going with the unboxing. As is almost always the case, the first thing out of the Greenworks GPW 2006's box is a set of instructions and warranty cards. Because this unit requires some assembly, I won't be sending this in the direction of the rubbish bin just quite yet. Next out is the spray gun. Initial quality impressions are very good. From my vantage point, it feels relatively robust and I've certainly handled cheaper. I doubt it would pass for commercial use, but for home use, I think it'll do just fine. Underneath this, we have part one of the accessory holders. I'm not a huge fan of the fact it's all plastic. At this price point, we're getting into the territory where some competitors make this piece out of steel. Already attached to it are the 25 and 40 degree pressure tips plus soap nozzle. Disappointingly, the last one is all plastic. Below this, and we've got hangers for the wand and extension cord, also all plastic. Next up is the high pressure hose. It feels just fantastic. Unlike many competing models, Greenworks provides a genuinely nice piece of kit here. The threads are all metal, it has built-in strain reliefs, and the hose itself is braided. It just feels high quality. Setting that aside, and we've got the stainless steel wand extension out next. For me, a unit that came with a metal wand was a requirement. They're just so much more durable and versatile than cheaper plastic ones that use proprietary fittings. Out next is the cart handle. The metal is relatively lightweight, but at least it's not plastic. The wheels feel solid and weighty. The tread itself is made of an unknown material. It's not a hard plastic, nor is it a soft rubber. It's like those two mated and the resultant offspring made it into the Greenworks packaging. Last thing before getting the big unit out is some assembly hardware, the turbo nozzle, and the wire hose hanger. The pump and motor feels very solid. You get the impression that under that nice looking plastic hood, there's a lot of steel and aluminum. This was apparent before even removing it, and the entire box with all of its included accessories was much heavier than you'd expect for a box of that size. Taking a close-up look at the pump, and everything appears to be very well built. Little things like an all-metal exterior and socket cap bolts give one the impression they didn't just build the cheapest pump possible and send it to market. Unfortunately, but not necessarily a huge deal, is the fact that the water inlet and high pressure outlet are on opposite sides of the pump. We'll get to why that's annoying in just a minute. Before putting everything together, I wanted to take just one moment to talk about warranty protections. This Greenworks pressure washer offers three years. This is at the very upper end of what manufacturers offer in this segment of the market. Furthermore, Greenworks does not appear to exclude accessories from their warranty as many others do. For example, Karcher offers only one year on the pump and motor and just 90 days on accessories. A far cry from what they ambiguously refer to as industry leading. Sunjo, what I would consider Greenworks most direct competitor, offers two years. Finally, Ryobi, for those who prefer the orange box over the blue one, offers a comparable three years. Getting the Greenworks GPW 2006 assembled begins with a glance at the semi-poor quick start guide. Wheels go on first. Here we see a simple half inch-ish axles and basic bushings. No ball bearings, but then again, I probably wouldn't expect them on a pressure washer or anything other than commercial units. The handle snaps into place, secured with a couple of spring mounted pins. Would have liked to see some type of threaded fastener here, though I suppose this does make semi-disassembly for storage easier. Installing the accessory holder will require the use of a drill or driver. 
Here we've got some pretty aggressive threads into plastic. Up next are the holders for the spray gun and power cord. I really like how Greenworks has gone ahead and riveted on some metal machine threads. Makes disassembly, if ever necessary, an easier task. The gun goes on the left and the cord bracket on the right. The holder for the cord is a two-piece affair, which at first I thought was odd. However, when I got her together, we can see the reason. It's done this way so one can rotate the bracket post-assembly. Nice touch, Greenworks. The final step before snapping in all accessories is to install the high-pressure hose hanger. It's just a thin piece of metal wire being held in place by thin plastic. I'm not really a fan of how the manufacturer set this up. After all primary assembly is complete, we'll go ahead and loop on the 35-foot power cord and 25-foot hose. Like I mentioned earlier, both are very well made. I'll also go ahead and assemble the spray gun and its extension wand. And oh, check this out. All metal threads with double O-rings. Very nice. Now that we're all set up, let's get some water into this machine and see if it does or does not suck. Actually, I guess blow would be the correct negative or positive adjective depending on the context. Turning on the water at the spigot and that's an oopsie. Forgot that what water enters it will exit unless restrained. Let's install the high pressure hose and give that another try. Much better. Before powering on, the instructions mention one is to purge air from the line for approximately 30 seconds. After this, it's finally time to depress the power button and get a feel for the unit. So it may be a little thing, but it's nice that a power indicator light is included on the switch. A minor touch for sure, but it does provide evidence that Greenworks didn't manufacture this unit at the cheapest possible price. First operating impressions are very positive. The unit feels more powerful than other electric pressure washers I've used, but obviously falls short of anything but the most underpowered or half-broken gas units. Speaking of power, let's talk about that for one second. One reason I bought the Greenworks GPW 2006 was because of its advertised 14 amp motor. This is at the higher end of what's available in 120 volt electric powered units. To test if this figure was accurate, I used my AC clamp meter. Here we see a current draw of 13.5 amps, give or take a few hundredths. This outlet also tested at 123 volts, meaning the Greenworks pressure washer is drawing approximately 1660 watts or 2.22 horsepower. For comparison's sake, the Honda GCV160 engine, a model very commonly used on lower end gas pressure washers, produces 4.4 horsepower, or roughly twice as much power. So this should give one a good idea of how this unit from Greenworks compares power-wise to its liquid T-Rex fueled competitors. Just spraying the driveway without any soap and it appeared to do a good job of dislodging ground in dirt. Far better than just a garden hose is done. From what I can tell so far, I think it will do a great job around the house. Before putting it away for the night, I also thought I should go ahead and try answering several burning questions. Things like, can one remove dandelion weeds with a Greenworks pressure washer? As it turns out, yes, yes you can. Is this pressure washer able to remove the painted lettering from my recycle container? No, no it cannot. Will this unit remove bird poop from my driveway? Yes, with ease. Now remember earlier when I mentioned how the unit's placement of the power cord, water inlet, and high pressure outlet on opposite sides of the pump was problematic? Let's demonstrate why. When all hooked up, moving it around is really awkward. One is required to perform this little shuffle thing while holding hoses. Very annoying. Before putting everything away for the night, I wanted to give this unit a little sound pressure level, aka volume, test. The main reason I went electric over gas was noise. Really hoping I made the right decision. I'll place the sound meter about 4 feet away. In all likelihood, one will be working further away than that, so consider this a worst case number. Firing it up and we get 84.5 decibels. 
For those without a frame of reference, this is almost exactly what I recently measured on my Dyson ball animal. So for comparison's sake, it's about as loud as a vacuum cleaner. Before putting it away for the night, I went ahead and threw on the turbo nozzle and then tried to put my hand in the high pressure stream. It hurt. Much more so than the 25 or 40 degree tips. I then tried to do it again, in the process attempting the same thing and expecting different results, proving my insanity. After day one, I'm very happy with the unit. However, as it wouldn't be a couple of days until I got the chance to use it again, I went ahead and ordered a quick disconnect kit off of Amazon. It became apparent after only one disassembly, this would be pseudo required for anyone planning on using it frequently. For less than half the cost of Lowe's, the Amazon version also came with some quick hose disconnects. Also worth noting is that not all hose to pump connections are the same. Thankfully, the Greenworks line uses the industry standard M22-14 coupling. Other brands often use the less common M22-15 or even worse, proprietary connections. I'll place a link to the exact kit I bought down in the description. It works great with this unit. It's an affiliate link so the channel will earn a small commission, which is greatly appreciated. Our first real test for the Greenworks GPW 2006 is a little truck washing action. I've always been intrigued by the idea of a touchless wash with a pressure washer, so I thought I'd give that a go. In preparation, I also went ahead and bought a shorty gun and foam cannon. Not at all required like the quick disconnects, but pretty fun. Link for this is also in the description. The 25 degree nozzle provides plenty of power to blast off any dirt, followed by a bath of suds and a rinse. For what it's worth, when it comes to rinsing, I found a good old garden sprayer works better than the pressure washer. Overall, I'm completely satisfied with the Greenworks GPW 2006. And I'm not one to fawn over products easily. It's competitively priced, comes with nice quality accessories, isn't too loud, and appears to have all the power I need for around the yard type tasks. My only real complaint comes from the placement of the inlet and outlet hoses annoyingly being on opposite sides of the pump. Other than that, this is a highly recommended product. Just make sure to check Lowe's.com before purchasing in-store.